Many people ask me questions uh, and I answer them, whether that be in the YouTube comments, Facebook, Instagram, and this has been happening for the last over two years. And I thought, if someone has a question to something, then usually someone else is asking the same, if not a similar thing. So I'm going to be answering the question that got sent to me on Facebook by someone listening and watching the content I produce. And why not just put the camera on and record it instead of just writing back? The question's going to be answered anyway. I might as well make a video from it. And in the process, maybe can answer other people's questions they had. That may have been similar. As a preface to all these types of videos that will be created like this, I hesitated, to, I hesitate, and I hesitated to even create something like this in a video format and give someone advice like this because I didn't feel, I didn't feel worthy to give advice. I felt like I wasn't experienced enough. I felt like I needed more wisdom, among many other things. But it made me think, no, hold on. Everyone answers questions at some point. Everyone is asked questions, everybody answers them subsequently. So whether that be answered in private, or in a chat, or online, does the medium really matter? So I thought, the question is going to be answered. I may as well document the answer and the question for something to reflect upon and to assist other people in their own journey so that is what this is for. It's not me trying to say this is the only way to do it. This is just my perspective on one question someone asked me. And that is with all these types of videos. So, so I've got a question from a guy named Saf. Now Saf had became friends with somebody and over the years he they developed a close relationship. He'd given a lot to this person. Their families became close and Saf's friends became this person's friends. But he noticed that eventually got to a point where this person was growing distant from him. This person started conducting petty little behaviors that sent Saf a message that he wasn't his friend anymore. He may have been a bit more manipulative than he, than he uh, originally thought. It got to a point where this friend of Saf's would hang out with his own friends that he introduced him to. And eventually Saf would be excluded from this group that he once called friends. He'd be excluded to the point where he wouldn't get invited to certain uh, outings, certain events, certain things that he would organize. Instead, they would go with the friend, Saf's old friend. Saf said, the times that I would hang out with these people, my friend that I used to be close with would do things to remind me that I'm no longer as close with these people. Like petty things here and there. So naturally, Saf decided to make new friends, which makes sense. Move on, good move. And be, be around new people. But then he began to get accused of being someone who's switched up, someone who's ungrateful, selfish. And he also to mention Saf lives in a small town. Word gets around quick. But Saf will try and make new friends and good, Saf, keep moving forward, keep trying to make new friends. But he'll notice his friend suddenly befriends the new friend Saf is trying to make. So it seems like this person is in the shadow of Yusuf. It seems like you have someone who's trailing in your shadows and following your moves, lurking behind you in the shadow, lurking behind you in the shadows, and trying to take advantage of certain situations. Whether he's doing it consciously or unconsciously, I don't know. But he said, I noticed that this friend of mine will purposely try to befriend these new people that I'm hanging out with, which makes it very chaotic in my mind since it just makes me feel alone, not in control at all with my social life. 
to the point where even I am away in college, I am mentally affected by the situation and I just feel completely powerless. When I read these laws, I just think about how this game has been used on me and it is absolutely driving me insane. Wow, I didn't read this, I didn't see this one. Luckily, I've been more in tune with things like meditation and the teachings by someone called Julian Blunk, who I'm aware of, on letting go. And if it wasn't for that, I would have committed suicide, to be honest. Hmm. So, I did not uh, comprehend the severity of what we were dealing with here. Okay. You don't feel in control. You feel alone. You feel powerless as a result of a social situation, as a result of the relationships you seem to have cultivated. And you're frustrated that the game, as people call it, the game of power and manipulation and human behavior has been used against you. Saf, I want to share with you a quote that really resonates with me that I reflect on during the chaotic times in my life where I feel maybe a bit powerless or helpless as a result of people or my perception of my situation. And that is understanding that there is nothing stable in human affairs. Therefore, avoid undue depression in adversity and undue elation in prosperity. There is nothing stable in human affairs. Nothing. We are chaotic beings. One minute we're rational, one minute we're, one minute we're rational, one minute we're irrational. One minute we're reactive, one minute is responsive. Therefore, knowing this information, knowing that human beings are some of the most unreliable but reliable, chaotic but calm, both spectrums, right? Understand that there's both spectrums can happen at any time. Therefore, avoid undue depression in adversity because you know what's going to happen. You expect it and avoid undulation in prosperity. Oh, everything's going great? Oh, your social life's going great? Don't get too excited because it's going to ebb and flow once again. So, that's first of all, understanding that this is normal. People are chaotic. But the only thing you can control, Saf, is your response to this situation. A lot of people say it's not what happens to you, it's how you respond to it. And I'm going to regurgitate a lot of aphorisms and quotes because that resonate with me because there's a lot of truth in these, in these phrases. Well, at this point, Saf, you, you could do a couple of things and you have to realize a couple of things that the common denominator could be you. What I mean by that is that if you continue to go to new situations and new social groups and you continually find that this pattern keeps repeating, people keep accusing you of certain uh, poor traits, selfishness, ungratefulness, and you keep having these feelings as a result of it, you may have to realize that it could be you. It could be something you're doing saying, a way you're conducting yourself, that could be causing these groups of people to not think too fondly of you. Or, it could legitimately be as a result of this old friend of yours who seems to be following in your shadow and taking your friends, for lack of better words. It could be partly because of him, but you want to be careful about that because it's easy to blame other people. And you don't, you're in a victim mentality right now. You feel powerless. You feel like the world is not really working for you. People aren't really working for you right now. And the more you dive through that victim mentality, woe is me, uh, the worse it's going to get. And the harder it's going to be to get yourself out. So be very careful about blaming the world and your surroundings. Look in the mirror. The answer's there. It may sound a pretty fluffy thing to say, but no one's coming to rescue you. No one's coming to save your situation. No one's going to wave a wand and make it all better. Um, 
relationships are very important. Human beings are very important. They're the foundation. We need, we need people. We need people, right? This is the foundation of who we are. So this is a very serious topic. I'd also encourage you to dive into the psychology of this person who's following your show. It's this old friend of yours. Talk to him. Befriend him. See what's going on in his head. See if he's really, uh, if he's actually a malevolent person. If he's actually a manipulative person. See if his intentions are actually conniving. Or whether he's just a harmless, like, sheep, you know, just following your shadows. Uh, figure that out. Because there might be something to learn there. You might find befriending him, someone who you may call an enemy, could be helpful to you. The last thing I would suggest is start fresh, start new, leave your small town, leave your old friends, remove them all from social media, have no contact with them, or the ones that you don't want to have contact with. I'm sure there are people who you would want to continue staying in contact with and start again. I'm sure that's something you've thought about already and something we all eventually do. We all move, eventually move out of, the, out of our homes and start anew in a new town, something bigger and better. So that thing, that will happen eventually, I imagine. And then you're going to see whether it's really you. Because if it repeats again, you know it's you. Well, you have, you're very certain it's you. Uh, but... Hopefully, the pattern doesn't repeat because you can use this information that you're learning from people like Julian Blunk and maybe this answer can help somewhat as well. Or maybe you can't. Maybe you need to keep figuring it out, asking yourself more questions, keep looking in the mirror, keep reading, keep, keep living, keep living. Go figure it out. This won't be a problem in a year's time. This... this this won't be a problem in the near future. I'm confident of that. I hope you are too. I hope that helps, Saf, in some small way.